whenever a project goes from a few hundred users, a few thousand users, to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands basically overnight, no matter what the project is, someone is going to discover at least a vulnerability or two. Now, sometimes those vulnerabilities are fairly minor, they're fairly benign. Other times, you're Lemmy, and you're dealing with an XSS or cross-site scripting vulnerability. This was discovered after pretty big instances like Lemmy World and Blaha Zone were hit with the attack, and led to those instances along with pretty much every other one that knew they were hit, going dark temporarily to clean up all of the mess that was going on. Now we know exactly what the problem is and exactly what needs to be dealt with, but just for your safety and the safety of your account, I would highly, highly recommend that you avoid using Lemmy for a couple of days a week just to give time for the admins to clean everything up and make sure everything is updated. Now, for anyone unaware, an XSS or cross-site scripting attack is where an attacker can inject code into a website that otherwise would be safe. Usually this is done through some sort of unsanitized user input field. It is a user input field that is not properly escaping characters to make sure code cannot be run. Things like a comment section, a description tab, and things like this. In this case, the attacker is injecting runnable JavaScript into a comment, and when a user loads that page, that JavaScript is then run. But in Lemmy's case, it's not an issue with the comment section directly. Instead, it's an issue with Lemmy's customer moat system and the markdown renderer. So some users on various different clients notice these really weird comments showing up. This is clearly not a comment that any regular user would make, and it's the exact same comment being made by a bunch of different users. In this case, the code is not being run, because whatever client they're using doesn't really know how to interpret whatever this garbled mess is. But if you don't see that comment and instead see an emote, then the code is being run. When an emote is uploaded to Lemmy, there's a couple of different parameters that can be set. So this is a totally normal emote, not part of any exploit. This is blobcat underscore heart. Now, blobcat underscore heart is the title that has been set. It also has alt text. This is the text that is shown if the image cannot be loaded or if a screen reader comes across this image. The other thing you can set is the source of the image. This is where the image can be found. Now, that is the way it's supposed to work. When you upload an emote, you don't modify the CSS directly. Instead, you are given input fields to set the title, the source, and the alt text. But what if there was a way to take the alt text field and then maybe get out of this quotation block and start writing additional things like maybe on load and then some JavaScript. Well, that is exactly what has been done. Someone forgot to escape certain characters and you can just break out of the alt text field and continue writing additional HTML properties. One of them being on load. Now on load, as the name would suggest, runs something when the page loads. In this case, running this really weird command, on load, fetch, this string from char code and this big list of numbers plus BTOA document.cookie plus document.get element by id, more string from char code, and this really weird string of numbers. Whenever you see string from char code, just assume they're trying to obfuscate some sort of string. String from char code basically generates a string based on the numbers of those individual symbols. In this case, it's hiding a URL. In this case, https colon slash slash zelensky.zip slash save slash. Did I not tell you the only reason .zip is going to exist is for scammers, malware, and hackers? And I've been proven right again. Now this second string basically translates into nav admin, and you should be very, very concerned when you see document.cookie plus some other element. So it translates into btoa document.cookie plus nav admin, and it's appending that onto the end of the URL. What it is doing is appending the encoded JWT token onto the URL along with whether the cookie says if the user is an admin or not. So not login credentials directly, but the cookie for the current session. If that cookie is on another computer, that user will just be on the account. On the bright side, 
every sensible instance, force logged out every single user, making that token no longer valid. But it wasn't noticed straight away. One of the Lemmy World admin accounts were compromised, and this led to some further confusion about what was happening. That user on the compromised account then decided to inject further code into the legal page on Lemmy World, leading to people being confused about what the actual problem was. Some people thought there was an issue on the legal page, completely distracting from the actual emote problem. And over on Blaha Zone, they had the homepage replaced with a YouTube video, which of the things you could do with a cross-site scripting attack is probably the least malicious thing. It's certainly going to make the admins realize there is a problem. Now, to be clear on exactly what the problem is, some users have gone and replicated the problem themselves. In this case, the person injected a simple alert saying, this is fine. And you know what? There is already a patch fixing the problem. This patch was first made about four hours after the problem was first discovered. Now, the initial version of the fix wasn't exactly perfect, so it went through some revision to try to properly address the issue, but now it has been merged. So any instance out there should go and install the patch and make sure they are running an absolute up-to-date version. If you are not running an up-to-date version, you are putting yourself and your users in danger. The fix itself, though, was very simple. It was a very tiny bit of code that caused the issue. But it's also a fairly obvious problem. The alt text is being set to item.content. There is no additional parsing here, and that text is being put directly into the image tag. This is very easy to break out of. You just need to include some quotation marks and you're good to go. Do you want to know the funniest part about all of this? Someone sounded the alarms that something like this could be possible about a month ago. Consider using HTTP only for JWT cookie. Is your proposal related to the problem? The JWT cookie can be accessed from JavaScript. If one was to find an XSS vulnerability in Lemmy UI, it could be abused to extract the JWT cookie. Someone found one, and they did exactly that. Using the HTTP only cookie attribute would prevent JavaScript code from accessing the JWT cookie. I do want to address one comment trying to throw blame around for the problem rather than focusing on the issue itself. This seems like a really basic vulnerability that whoever wrote the code to do that probably should have been aware of. It concerns me about the security of the rest of Lemmy if they're making such basic errors. And it's absolutely true the input should have been sanitized and the problem should have never existed. The user is not to be trusted. This is one of the most basic things I was taught when I was at university. The user is always trying to hack your system, never trust what they write. But it's not always such a simple process. Lemmy's core development team is about four people. Four. For a project that, in some ways, people are trying to make replace Reddit. And there are some passing devs that come by every so often. But when you suddenly have all of these extra eyes on a project, there are going to be some things that you didn't consider. Some problems that you just didn't notice that are going to be spotted by all of these extra people using the platform. Some of those users are trying to be malicious. For any of the admins out there who haven't cleaned up this problem yet, who still have these emotes in their database, there is a guide on how to fix this on the issue report for this problem. Basically, it just involves deleting some things from the database, nothing really that complex. All of this is very well explained, and if you're running an instance, it should be pretty easy to do. Now, as I said earlier, I would highly recommend waiting a couple of days before you start actively using Lemmy again. Wait until the changes propagate out to all of the instances, everything has been cleaned up, and then go ahead and do so. But right now, it's probably a good time to take at least a couple of days break. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you a Lemmy user? Are you just discovering what Lemmy is right now? I know a lot of people out there who have never heard of it. I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scrub silly bearer pay linked in the description down below. That's gonna be it for me and let me go. What? <laughs>
Like this. 